Hey there! Thanks for watching today's video. I got an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon giveaway going on, so if you're interested, be sure to check that out. Also, I'm selling some Rainbow Rocket uniforms. We got shirts for men, women, hoodies, long sleeve t-shirts. So if you're interested, be sure to check them out. Links will be in the description for both of them. But beyond that, I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Legendary Pokemon Pokemon that are so rare that you can only catch one of each species per cartridge. Pokemon that are so powerful that their stats exceed the normal limits. Pokemon that are so complete that they don't evolve into anything else. Well, that's what we thought. Until Cosmog was revealed anyways. Cosmog is the first legendary Pokemon to ever evolve, first into Cosmoam and then either Solgaleo or Lunala upon exposure to Sunlight in Pokemon Sun and Moonlight in Pokemon Moon respectively. But what's interesting about Solgaleo and Lunala is that they form a trio with Necrozma. But since two of the three members from this trio are final evolutions of Cosmog, could the last member of the Cosmic Trio, Necrozma, be an evolution of Cosmog as well? What's going on guys? Hybridary here. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do enjoy the video, then be sure to hero punch that like button. If you don't, hit that dislike button. Let me know how you feel. Comment down below with your thoughts and opinions. Do you think that Necrozma is a part of the Cosmog family? Do you agree with this theory? Why or why not? Let me know. Share this video around. And finally, subscribe and hit the little bell icon if you want to stay up to date with all my content. With Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon only being a few days away, the hype is beyond real. So before the games come out, I thought I'd make a little mini-series of videos on the mascot legendary Pokemon of these games, Necrozma. Now starting off this mini-series, we have a question that almost everyone has asked themselves at least once, and that is, could Necrozma be an evolution of Cosmog? Let's get the most basic points out of the way first. Necrozma shares the primary psychic typing with the entire Cosmog family. Another thing that it shares with Solgaleo and Lunala is their battle theme. All three of these legends have the same battle theme when battling them, which is something that doesn't really happen unless you're a part of the same group somehow. Legendary Pokemon that are grouped together almost always have the same battle theme, so the fact that Solgaleo, Lunala, and Necrozma all share the same battle theme implies that they form a trio together, and it's likely that they do. Now I'm not going to go too into the alchemy stuff here because you've more than likely seen plenty of videos on Pokemon and its relation to alchemy from Loxton and various other Poketubers, but for those of you that haven't, you may be wondering how the Emissary of the Sun and the Emissary of the Moon could be placed in the same group as a prism. Well that's because the Cosmic Trio have alchemic origins, and in alchemy, the three main alchemic powers are represented by the Sun, the Moon, and a prism. I'd love to talk about the Cosmic Trio and their alchemic relations, but there's so many great videos on the topic already, so I'd just be repeating what's already been said and done by various other Poketubers, so I'm gonna try and leave alchemy out of it as much as possible. But one thing that I'm definitely not going to leave out is their connection to space. The reason why these three are referred to as the Cosmic Trio and not the Alchemic Trio or anything is because of their connection to space. Heads up, there's a mandatory astronomy lesson coming up, and it may seem useless at first, but trust me, it's what we're going to use to solidify this theory. Going into the cosmic origins of the Cosmic family, Cosmog is the Nebula Pokemon. A nebula is a huge cloud that's comprised of gas and dust in outer space. Over the span of millions of years, gravity brings this gas and dust closer together, eventually hitting a point where the nebula collapses in on itself, transforming into a protostar. And while it doesn't take millions of years, this is why Cosmog evolves into the protostar Pokemon, Cosmoam. Protostars are kind of like baby stars. Their gravity is strong enough for them to emit heat and light, but they're surrounded by a layer of dust. In Cosmoam's case, it's its shell, making their light impossible to see. But as time passes, the gas and the dust still begin to collapse on each other, eventually becoming so hot that they reach the point where nuclear fusion takes place and transforms the protostar into a star. Now, a protostar pretty much has its own complicated evolutionary line, but it essentially becomes a star. If we were to look at it in terms of Solgaleo and Lunala, Solgaleo is obviously meant to represent the sun, and some protostars are able to turn into stars like the sun. But what about Lunala? The moon isn't a star, so what's the deal? Well, Lunala is just the evolution of Cosmoam, 
that's soaked in moonlight. So Game Freak basically designed Lunala to represent the moon, but also be a star at the same time. There is some science behind this though. When a protostar is forming into a star, not all of the gas and dust get used up. The gas and the dust that's left over basically end up forming moons. So this is why even though the moon isn't a star, it still makes sense for Cosmoem to evolve into Lunala. Despite all this, Lunala has been designed in a way where like Solgaleo, it's basically a star. Also, shoutouts to Bismuth for putting the origins of the cosmic family together on Poke Amino. You're awesome, Bismuth. Thank you. So that's the connection between Solgaleo, Lunala, and space. But what about the prism Pokemon? Well, Necrozma isn't just based off a of prism. It has a star symbol at the back of its head, showing that it's related to stars in space in some way. Now, it could be based off a of black hole, which is a collapsed star, because both Necrozma and black holes have the ability to absorb light. But it could also be based off of a black dwarf, a theoretical dead star. It's theoretical because, as far as we know, there's none that exists in the real world just yet. But it's theorized that a black dwarf could be a white dwarf that's cooled down, which no longer emits heat or light. And Necro does mean dead or corpse. Huh. Black dwarf. White dwarf. No longer emits heat or light. Interesting. So, what if Cosmo just died and turned into a black dwarf? Could it evolve into Necrozma that way? Now, there's something very necessary that's needed to evolve Cosmo into Solgaleo or Lunala, and that's that it needs to be bathed in sunlight or moonlight. In our Pokemon world, it's inevitable that Cosmo will receive massive exposure to one of these two, because the sun and the moon always rise in this world. So there's no real way to know whether it could evolve into Necrozma, unless you get rid of the sun and the moon. But, what if Cosmoem received no light? What if it evolved in a place like Ultra Megalopolis? Could it evolve into Necrozma then? Nah, I don't think so. You see, when I first got the idea to make this video, I was honestly going in thinking that, yeah, Necrozma should be a part of the Cosmic family. And, I still think that it is. It's just that before, I thought that Cosmoem would evolve into Necrozma. But now, I have another idea. Reddit user Zenairu, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, had a theory that's backed up by astronomy. Essentially, this person believes that Cosmog could be the remnants or leftover space dust of a dead Necrozma. This is because when a star dies and becomes a white dwarf, and then becomes a black dwarf, it leaves remnants of itself behind in the form of intergalactic space dust, or in other words, nebula. And then, it hit me. I was looking at this the wrong way the entire time. Stars die, it's inevitable. Cosmog eventually turning into Necrozma makes sense. But there's no jumping stages here. You gotta go through one stage to get to the other. There's no way Cosmoem can evolve without bathing in light, because that's how it evolves into a star. But without bathing in light, there's no way Cosmoem can become Necrozma, because it hasn't become a star yet. And without becoming a star, there's no way for you to become a white dwarf and later a black dwarf. But Solgaleo and Lunala are stars, and as they age, they would have to go through the different stages of a star's life, eventually becoming a black dwarf. So, am I suggesting a 4 or 5 stage evolution? That Necrozma is an evolution of Solgaleo or Lunala? Not exactly. You remember our little astronomy lesson from a little while ago? Cosmog is a nebula. A nebula turns into a protostar, which is Cosmoem. A protostar turns into a star, which is Solgaleo or Lunala. And then eventually, that star dies and becomes a white dwarf, but is still emitting a massive amount of light and heat, and then it cools down to become a black dwarf. The next part of this is the bit that we mentioned earlier, where when stars die, they leave bits and pieces of a nebula behind. This is the life cycle of a star, meaning that this isn't an evolutionary line, this is an evolutionary cycle. Wait, 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 before you go, I know I'm acting all crazy again with my theories, but hear me out. Regardless of which way it goes, I don't see Solgaleo or Lunala actually evolving to Necrozma, or whatever this is. Again, stars have to die, so for Solgaleo and Lunala to theoretically evolve into Necrozma, they would have to die in the game, which isn't happening. Also, I don't think they'd actually evolve into Necrozma. Again, Necro does mean corpse. So I think it's just a dead corpse of the old Solgaleo or Lunala that turned into a white dwarf. So it's kinda like Shin Ninja in the sense that 
it just appears in the Pokemon world as a separate entity. Except this time, it appears upon death. Also, black dwarfs are only theoretical stars, but they're theoretical because it takes billions of trillions of years for a star to become a black dwarf. And yes, we kind of did have a nebula become a star in like a few levels, but in the real world, that takes anywhere between 100,000 years to 10 million years, which is a lot, but it's a lot smaller in comparison to billions of trillions of years. Because of this, this may be the only necrosma to ever exist within the universe, or maybe within the collection of a few different universes. So in terms of levels or Pokemon lifespan, we're likely to never see a Solgaleo or Lunala become Necrozma. But this has happened in Pokemon before. We know that Diancie and Carbink are directly related, but we never see it in the games, nor are they in the same evolutionary line, as Diancie is just a mutation of Carbink. Now despite this mutation, Carbink and Diancie are a bit far from each other in the Pokedex, but we still know that they're directly related. So Necrozma being a bit far from the Cosmic family in the Pokedex, doesn't mean that it can't be a part of this supposed evolutionary cycle. I just wanted to point this out. Going back to this evolutionary cycle, after Necrozma cools down, Nebi is born. In space. I know we had the whole scene in the altar of the sun or the moon, where Solgaleo and Lunala supposedly make Cosmog, and I know I made a whole video on that, but what if this was just the summoning of Cosmog? I mean, the Pokemon is made out of space dust and all. If it appeared on the remaining bits of Necrozma and was just chilling in space as space dust, till Solgaleo and Lunala summoned it, then it would make sense. Or at the very least, it could be that the space dust that was used to make Cosmog just came from Necrozma. And then Solgaleo and Lunala used that same space dust to make Cosmog. So do I think that Necrozma is a member of the Cosmog family with the evidence that I've dug up from astronomy? Yes, I believe it is a member of the Cosmog family, but not necessarily as an evolution of the Cosmog family, but rather as an entity that's formed upon the death of the final member of the Cosmog family. But I also believe that the remnants of Necrozma are what make up the next generation of Cosmog. Maybe that's why Necrozma is after Nebi in the first place. You ever wonder why Necrozma seems to be after only Solgaleo or Lunala, and not both of them? Maybe it's because it realizes that it's missing a part of itself, and that that part of itself is Nebi, the remnants of what it used to be. But that's a topic for another day. I'm sure I sound crazy as it is already, but Hey, if you ain't a little crazy, you ain't really sane, am I right? Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll have another video up soon where I talk about my thoughts on whether I think Necrozma could be evil or not. And in that video, I'll talk more about what I think its connection to Nebi might be. But till then, be sure to let me know what you thought of this video, and be sure to check out some of my other videos. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.